What kind of idiot signs up for a game like this? Well, a desperate idiot. Desperation is one of the few things that nearly guarantees that you will be taken advantage of. Desperation is weakness, and in the animal kingdom, the weak get preyed upon by the strong. We see the roots of desperation in the first episode of Squid Games where the players are brought into the arena. Having been drugged, the players are understandably hesitant to commit to playing anything until they know what's going on. Would you cooperate with someone who just gassed you? But then, the writers show us something important to understanding desperation. As the players argue, the referee begins to start revealing people's true motives for joining the game. Pay attention, the next few seconds will show you the kind of weaknesses that motivate people to risk their lives. 540 million in debt. 118 Uyong 1.02 billion in debt. And the main character, Song, has a whole host of reasons to take a big risk. He is about to lose his daughter. He has already lost his dignity. His mother has physical problems but is forced to work. He is a compulsive gambler, and men are threatening to take his organs. All of this leads us to the heart of desperation captured by one principle. People craft an image of themselves based on what they value. If you think of yourself as popular, you're more likely to try and wear certain clothes and use certain phrases. But when humans fail to live up to these identities that they create, they begin to lose hope in achieving some version of their ideal life. Something happens. Their tolerance for risk increases. If you want to know more about how to spot this from a scientific perspective, check out the bonus content for this episode for free on our website. So how did Squid Games manipulate the player's high levels of desperation? Well, let's check out the first trick that they use in the train station scene. Keep in mind, this trick is very common in daily life and very powerful. The main character plays a game with a random man in the train station. We can assume that to some degree the main character was targeted because of their negative things happening in his life. The game seems too good to be true. He loses, he gets slapped. He wins, he gets money. He can keep playing until he wins. Thus, Song ends up winning the money, and the man he played against gives him his card. He tells Song to call him if he wants to play another game with even more money. The same sneaky tactic was used by the Chinese in World War II prisoner of war camps. The Chinese were so effective at manipulating the American POWs that the POWs regularly informed on each other, and some even moved back to live there after the war no violence was used. The Chinese first had the POWs perform some small task, like pronouncing that the United States wasn't perfect. They then asked them to write down statements like, communism isn't that bad. Eventually, they were writing full letters back to home and giving positive speeches about their captors. Both the Squid Games and POW camps use this compliance technique. It is called the foot in the door technique. It is a tactic where targets first ask to do something small in hopes of getting them to do something larger later. Hit like if you want YouTube to find you more content like this. The foot in the door technique preys on people's desires to remain consistent with their first action of agreeing. Just like in Squid Games, the actions are then ramped up each time until people are behaving in the desired faction. At the beginning of the show, no one would have agreed to a one-on-one -on -one fight to the death, but that is what happens at the end. So once players knew they could die, why did they keep going? Well, this leads us to the final way Squid Games took advantage of human psychology. Warning, I guarantee you fall prey each day to one of the following things. Humans regularly experience a brain bias that can contribute to risk-taking or illogical behavior. It is called optimism bias. Combined with extreme desperation, this bias made the players come back and risk their lives. We see things similar to optimism bias pop up all across psychology. People with narcissistic tendencies believe they're special and should be rewarded without any actual accomplishments. The Dunning and Kruger effect is a cognitive bias that focuses on how people with a low ability at a task overestimate their competence. All of these brain biases make the players start telling themselves that they weren't going to die. They were special. The risk wasn't really a risk for them. They were going to win and escape their desperate lives. This narrative keeps hope close and desperation at bay. Find this tendency within yourself and squash it.